perhaps have some eyes for in, in the helicopter on that car? Are you thinking we lost it? Uh, or did he pull over and get out of the car or something? We have not seen uh, that vehicle get out of there. Uh, so it's, it's not clear where exactly this car just went. Um, that's the challenge, of course, for tracking mode um, when you're not right on it is uh, if, if there's, and you're only tracking it from the air, if there's something that blocks your view from the air, it makes it really hard to track. Yeah, and of course, every uh, great looking Hyundai type car yeah. can look like the suspect vehicle. Uh, not sure if there was more than one person in that vehicle. We've seen so many of the smash and grab type of robberies or the thefts in stores where a large number of people come in and steal things. Uh, but we're hearing just this one vehicle and the robbery at the Sunglass Hut in Lakewood. Uh, joining us on the phone right now is Dennis Zine, a uh, former LAPD officer, a motorcycle officer, been involved in many pursuits himself, also a former member of the LA City Council. Um, Dennis, it, it appears that uh, we've lost this person. Well, this is not uncommon. They find a place to evade under a freeway, under a bridge, and leave the car and bail out and uh, there'll be a foot pursuit if they can locate, but it's a busy hour as we look after five o'clock in the afternoon, congested area. So uh, they're gonna try and find the individual, uh, look for the car, but that's not uncommon. We find as many times where they go under a freeway and they bail from the car, leave the car and take off on foot. So the helicopter can't do much with that. The ground units will converge and see what they can do if they have a good description of the suspect. So uh, sometimes we see this happen where they uh, will find a place, a way to escape. That might be the case in this particular situation. We also wonder how um, this may or may not impact it or not. We've seen under so many of our, our, our overpasses or underpasses, um, the amount of trash and homeless people and other things that are under there and you wonder if somebody may be able to like blend in with some of that, or, or is this the car here? Have we found the car? All right, well, good. So he uh, maybe temporarily waited under the tunnel, under the bridge, and uh, he'll proceed back out and the pursuit will continue. And there will be multiple agencies now because it's LAPD's jurisdiction. Uh, yeah, there he goes. So he's uh, 60, uh, 70 plus miles an hour on the surface street. Yeah, so uh, exactly. he's obviously trying to get away. It looks like there's some damage to the right front of the vehicle also. He may have gotten involved in a collision along the way. Well, but Dennis, what we see happen, go ahead. Yeah, we, we saw that long line of police vehicles. Um, so when we hear of the word tracking, they can track from the helicopter. Um, they have eyes on the different streets around Southern California. Um, what is the best way they can track a vehicle? Well, what they'll do is they'll track from the air. The air unit will broadcast the description, the location that the vehicle is proceeding. Uh, the ground units will then, in that particular area, go in a radius to try and find out where they're going to stop. Uh, when the when this pursuit gets to the 70, 80 mile an hour in the surface street, oftentimes they terminate for public safety. Yeah. And in that particular case, the helicopter will continually follow, but the ground units have to pull back just because of public safety issues. All right, so we're getting back on the freeway. We're now heading on the southbound 110 freeway. Uh, this robbery suspect wanted for holding up a sunglass hut in the Lakewood neighborhood is now on uh, his or her way uh, near downtown Los Angeles, driving at fast speeds, trying to weave through traffic, uh, and now moving into the carpool lane at uh, nearly 80 miles an hour. And they'll continue with that. Uh, the ground units, the CHP in particular, will close in. They have a more aggressive pursuit policy than the local agencies. Uh, but as long as they have a chopper overhead and they don't have tunnels and bridges uh, restricting the view, they'll be able to then uh, focus on this individual and take him into custody or her. It depends mm. on where it ends up. Well, but uh, this, this has gone for quite a distance so far, and we see it continue. I don't see any police units or CHP units. Yeah, we just, we just saw a news van. I wonder if that was our news van that was just right, right next Getting to this car. View. But, but this uh, this person's really flying right now, which is dangerous to be doing in the middle of of rush hour. People don't see this person coming, and it may be more dangerous, Dennis, because there are not lights and sirens behind this person warning people that somebody is driving at this high of a speed. Exactly, and the, the fire and the red lights, that's used to uh, warn the people, caution the people, but on a freeway at that speed, 93, 94, 95 miles an hour, 
uh, that that sound is really not going to be heard by the motorist uh, if that speed is continuing. Yeah. Uh, when you're going 90 miles an hour on a freeway and the units are close behind, vehicles in the immediate vicinity, other vehicles won't hear anything. Hopefully they'll be able to see the lights and pull over. And that's what we want to do is get out of the way so the officers can take custody of this individual as soon as possible. So, Dennis, this driver is 110 southbound. We'll hit the 105. We saw the exit signs there. Uh, the person came from Lakewood. So if that person goes 105 eastbound, they could be heading right back towards the Lakewood area. Correct. And uh, maybe they're familiar with that area. I mean, they're not going to be able to get away with the chopper overhead. And obviously, you may have more than one chopper overhead. I don't see any ground units close by, close proximity. But uh, the air unit will be broadcasting the location. They'll keep updating the ground units. Uh, CHP has a tendency to accelerate and get right behind them. We'll see if that happens. But the local jurisdictions oft uh, oftentimes pull back just for public safety issues. So this person could eventually uh, escape. But the air unit does keep vigilance over that and keep that uh, keep the ground units updated on the continuing location changes. Well, you say they're not going to be able to get away, and most of the time, oh. whoa, here we go, this is really oh getting dangerous gosh. here, weaving through traffic. Most of the time, they're not able to get away, but we do see instances uh, where they do get away, especially if they're just in tracking mode and they're able to pull into an underground parking lot or pull into something where it's not as easy for the helicopter to track them. We, we saw that for a second even during our own pursuit here. Exactly. This happens. Uh, I've seen one go to a, a card club, parked the car, jumped out, went to the card club, but the foolish individual didn't recognize that the video, yeah. uh, the video of everyone who enters the location. So uh, that person, they uh, people will identify real quick. Yeah, cameras everywhere, case, right? right? Yeah, everywhere, everywhere in casinos, uh, everywhere for safety, et cetera. But in this case, I don't see the CHP or any other law enforcement agencies close by because of that excessive speed. You know, 80 plus miles an hour, they're pulling back the ground units but again we've got a chopper overhead uh and they will continually broadcast update the location of the individual well that is scary to see those speeds right there and you just think Ooh. of this as you watch this pursuit going up to 100 miles per hour here with this driver you think about the other people there those innocent people there on the freeway on the roadways just trying to go to their location or get home and you certainly pray for their safety at this hour uh, so Absolutely. obviously, I'm thinking, Dennis, this driver knows that helicopter is overhead watching them. Yes, uh, and, and that is a deterrent. Hopefully the person will come to their senses and stop. But uh, if they want to get out, and sometimes we see them get out on the freeway and jump the center barrier, the freeway divider, there's all kinds of situations that take place. The bottom line is I would venture this person has been to a jail in the past. This is not the first time offense, uh, and they've already done time, so they don't want to go back, and this is an opportunity for them to try and elude apprehension by law enforcement. And this is a, a hazard to everyone on that freeway in the surrounding community. Everyone is in danger because of this individual and they're driving. So we've moved freeways again. We're now onto the 91 freeway uh, after some moves. It's, it's kind of surprising, Christine, uh, that there isn't more traffic that I am we're seeing at too. this time. I mean, that's part of the newsworthy part, that there's less, not, not, not completely jammed freeways at 511. Uh, uh, you know, even though it, I guess it is the summer and a lot of people are off, we're now in the Compton uh, neighborhood of Southern California, and this person is really going fast, uh, moving in between. There we see, there we just saw, look like maybe CHP uh, about to get behind, getting ready to get into this. You wonder, and then we see some of the potential front end damage there. Uh, you wonder if they were trying to shut down that that off ramp there, but but we'll see if they get more aggressive in pursuing this person. So now we're going to have a CHP unit right behind, uh, get as close as possible. I might try a pit maneuver, depending on the oh, speed. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Blowing whoa. through that intersection there. Obviously, that driver did not have the green light, almost hitting several cars there in that intersection. Very That's scary very now. Very dangerous. Race. And we think of that, of that horrible crash that we covered just a few weeks back with that person driving 100 miles an hour and, and not stopping, no skid marks, going through an intersection like that, and six people ended up dead. Uh, you know, a lot of people yeah. look at these pursuits as entertainment. They enjoy it, uh, like watching a reality show, but this is real-world stuff, and people driving through those intersections could be killed instantly by a very reckless driver who's being extraordinarily selfish and dangerous uh, right in the middle of rush hour traffic right now. 
and committed a felony. A robbery is a felony charge, so I would venture to say they've been arrested. Okay, in the here past we go. And done now we got an actual pursuit. Okay, right behind. I would venture to say they've been arrested. Okay, in the here past we go. And done now some we got time. an actual pursuit. Okay, right behind. So you you wonder if if I mean they're going a little fast right now for a pit maneuver. Usually that would be around. 35, 40 miles an hour. This guy's now going approaching, if that thing is accurate, 70 miles an hour. That seems maybe not quite oh, so school accurate bus. there. Passing Pass a, a school, school bus. bus. That is really sad. You when wonder you if they're going to try like to that. pit maneuver this person to try to make this thing end, if they can do that on these side streets there. But this driver is making it difficult, Dennis. When a driver's going that fast, it would be dangerous and almost impossible to pit him. Look at this, 75 miles an hour on a side street. Yeah. It's highly unusual to pit at that speed. Uh, the recommended speed is about 35, maybe 40. Uh, speed at that uh, that kind of speed is really unsafe. Uh, again, the officers are concerned about the public safety, and that's why oftentimes they terminate and just go for the air coverage. Uh, see what happens with that. Oh, here, here right we go. You know, Dennis, Here as, we go. As, wrong way as, through another intersection. As we're watching this, Dennis, uh, we're seeing this driver become increasingly more dangerous as he's going through these intersections, passing school buses and driving at these speeds on surface streets. In, oh, here we here go. We go. Is he going to make a pit? Let's take a look at this one here. These speeds are really high with other cars oh, around, though, too, Dennis. The, well, actually, the streets are pretty light with traffic, if you really examine. They're really not that busy right now. Um, well, that officer put the pressure on that car right there, letting that vehicle know he is right behind him. Yeah, we're a couple seconds behind you on the TV from the broadcast. Uh, so that is a CHP unit, and uh, that's an LAPD unit. I think that's LAPD. Oh, sheriff. It's a sheriff's unit right behind, and there's a CHP unit to the left. So it's LA County Sheriff's that's the oh, primary box. Look at that on the curb. Oh, my Whoa. goodness. Look at that. Whoa. Wow. And you is wonder that what kind of stuck? damage. Are they going to get out, or are they going to keep keep driving? through that. You wonder, it looks already, Christine, like the car sustained some damage before doesn't care. during this pursuit. Driver doesn't care. Oh, whoa, the wheel just fell, the hubcap just fell off. They're unpredictable, absolutely unpredictable behavior. And dangerous, so dangerous. Uh, that was wild. Dangerous. You put the public jeopardy in mind, on public jeopardy. Uh, this is what this individual is doing. Hopefully they will be able to block the driver now. They, hopefully they could block the oh, individual, oh. but that's not going to work. A reminder there, you know. lock your doors, everyone, because you never know when this suspect tries to get out and bail and carjack another vehicle. Wow. Okay. So this person is obviously uh, intent to uh, elude capture, and I would venture that they've been arrested in the past and uh, have an extensive record to have this type of driving and this type of crime, a robbery, and then to flee in this manner. So they just compound the charges. So it wouldn't be surprising if they start plowing through these cars that are stopped at the Whoa. light or get out and try and hard carjack someone, which is a common uh, activity that they do. So that's why I want to keep your windows up and your doors locked. Mm -hmm. good, good point, Dennis Zine. Thank you so much. We also want to bring into our coverage right now Stu Mundell, who, of course, covers uh, our pursuits in the morning uh, via Sky Fox. Stu, we're looking at a wild pursuit right here. Uh, this all started with apparently a robbery of a sunglass hut in Lakewood. Uh, it's now been going for some time now. The driver lost his hubcap, may have damaged his car a little bit up on the on the road there, but now we're back on the freeway. What are, what are you seeing as you look at this still you know I've, I've been watching your amazing footage and uh and listening to the great commentary and, and right now it, it appears that the sheriff's department is behind them by, behind that vehicle and dennis was right on the money when he was talking about the pursuit policies between the different agencies lapd sheriff's department california highway patrol california highway patrol probably one of the most aggressive and then the sheriff's department probably the least aggressive so i was kind of shocked to even hear the the idea that they might be even trying a pit maneuver especially with those high seats he, he back on the freeway there as i can see i'm watching is probably the same footage that you guys are seeing right now so he's back on the 91 but there's a lot of traffic out there and many times when we cover these i always think to myself this could Whoa. be the opportunity to kind of get them you know to block them in not you know not on purpose but you know just in that in a traffic situation but clearly as soon as i start talking about that there you go the driver's getting off the freeway there yeah. still in the uh in, this is going to be artesia boulevard we're still in the compton area so this is going to be sheriff land when he gets off the freeway uh you know these the, in, I've been watching it with you guys. Look, like well, another another hubcap gone. Made the turn right there, kind of. Uh, maybe you guys had a better picture of that, uh, Alec. Uh,
opportunity. You see something just fall off the car? Yeah, that would look like another one of the hubcaps is gone. Okay. Okay, so it was just a hubcap. I was wondering if maybe that was, a, was an actual tire. You know, just making a big old U-turn right there, on again, off again, getting back on the freeway, the uh, 91 the other way. Now, the Sheriff's Department, they seem to really like to use that helicopter and go into that tracking mode, and a lot of times that does make that big difference. The driver kind of slows down. He's not looking in the rearview mirror. He doesn't see those reds and blues flashing. He doesn't hear that noise. But in this case, it does appear that this guy, this person behind the wheel, really not slowing down. He even when there is nobody behind him because when i started watching this earlier on there was no there was no engagement on the ground uh, the california highway patrol wasn't there and that vehicle did not slow down the driving didn't get any better he actually went through that that uh, that stoplight right there well, we're so looking at these. In this case, this yeah. driver, you know, is basically just running amok on the roadways, endangering himself, endangering others, and these wild lane changes. You know, th that's not a Porsche, that's not a BMW, that's a small compact vehicle. And you know, when you start whipping it around like that with those little tires, I, you know, my 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 picture's a little choppy. I'm watching on an iPad, but yeah, I, I, I'm telling you, when he just made all those maneuvers right there, I was getting a little bit worried. Yeah, you know, just just watching because you just don't want to see him lose control and slide into some innocent person. There you go. We're getting back off the freeway. There, this is going to give the uh, the officers and on, on the ground that opportunity to reengage. Just because we don't see him there, we've seen enough of this. You know, Alec, Alec and, and Christina, we've seen enough where, you know, just because we don't see them right behind, as soon as that vehicle comes to a stop, and it, it, it will, you'll see these other officers just kind of appear and, and, and just kind of crowd that uh, suspect and get them into custody. Back on another really crowded street, high speeds, these ma crazy maneuvers, that vehicle clearly has been damaged already. This is just, it, it, it is just this recipe for disaster and again hopefully watching with everybody else right now we just hope that this thing comes to an end maybe the car gives up and then you know that suspect will get out with hands up but right now opening it up look at this 70 70 almost 80 miles an hour on surface street this is just so dangerous it's just so dangerous indeed Stu, I, the, the wording we used was just perfect. Recipe for disaster. You're so right there with those speeds. And look at that there on surface streets, driving so dangerously. This driver has no care for any other motorists there on the road. Um, Dennis Zion, if you're still with us, I want to bring you back yes. into the conversation and talk about what Ooh. we're seeing. This driver here went great the lengths. Center divider. Yep. But staying in the Compton oh, area. Oh, right. Whoa. Wrong way you know, now. Wrong way. I, I don't want to cut off Dennis at all. I, I have huge respect, but you know, every time he does a maneuver like that, every time he drives off the road, hits a curb, something like that, that's that opportunity for that flat tire. That's that opportunity for, you know, scraping the bottom, you know, getting a hole in the cooling system, an oil leak, something that will, you know, bring that car to an end. There you go, the sheriff's helicopter above it. And we did see one black and white there. And like I said, they are in the area. Uh, when it was on the 110 freeway, I'm home. I actually saw you know cars getting kind of in position and that's what's going on but right now just crazy high speeds mm. and then running those intersections and this is the thing folks on the road you're not expecting this you're not expecting you look out the window you see a car coming you're not in your mind going oh that guy's going 80. i can you know oh i can go gosh, ahead and pull out in the traffic you're thinking everybody's driving the safe same speed and then this person is doubling tripling oh, another oh, another. Oh, here we go and, you know what, what the normal speeds are this is what makes these so dangerous this is why people get hurt and again this person he stole sunglasses i you know i i i, I don't know if you guys know was there was there a weapon involved i mean is it really yet. worth sunglasses and, and maybe there's something more to this because I find it hard to believe that all these law enforcement agencies would put this kind of effort behind this guy knowing that he just took a pair of shades well, or a couple De of De shades. Dennis was saying that perhaps this guy is familiar with the law. So, uh, Dennis, you might want to weigh in on that perspective. And also, as I was starting to say, that we are staying here in the Compton area. We've talked about suspects often going to an area that is familiar to them. This driver's gotten on the freeway then off back on and off whoa, and, whoa, whoa, whoa. And finding a way wow, to God. stay in well, the compton area we find this this bizarre behavior and Stu is seen many many times from the air and what these folks do when they're in pursuits uh and it, this wouldn't be just stealing sunglasses there has to be more to it there probably had to be a robbery yeah. some significance they wouldn't be going through this effort for stealing a pair of sunglasses
uh, no matter how much the sunglasses cost. So it has to be something more, uh, a robbery with a gun or something to that effect. But what we find is bizarre driving, very hazardous, and this situation is going to continue until the individual user gets, they're not going to surrender, they're not going to stop. They're either going to get in a crash or the car is going to become disabled. Whoa, another one there. One of, one of the two, either the car gets disabled or come to a crash. They're not going to surrender. Uh, they may be friendly with the Compton area and try and find a place to escape. But as we see, the law enforcement is not giving up. But, but Stu was right when it comes to this bizarre driving that we see. But people aren't going to be doing this uh, if they've committed a theft of a sunglass. And law enforcement's not going to do this type of driving. They'd let the person go and get a license plate and do a warrant or whatever the case may be. But this has to be more than just a, a sunglass theft at the sunglass store. And I know they're expensive, but it's not worth people's lives and uh, this hazard that we see going on in the county of Los Angeles at this time. Well, we have seen at least three or four very close calls as this driver has been completely reckless driving through intersections, not minding uh, red lights, just moving through. And we have had very close uh, calls where crashes could have been catastrophic. Uh, this is a reminder for all of us who drive, and I certainly make this mistake sometimes, that maybe looking down at your phone for a second or maybe distracted in the car, looking over at somebody and not totally, completely, 100% focused. But there were a couple drivers a few moments ago, Christine, that barely Total. missed crashing into them, and because they were alert, were able to slam on the brakes and barely miss that car. Uh, and, and you're looking at some footage from earlier on the uh, right-hand side uh, of your screen. The top left is the live picture on your screen, looking at some of these other earlier uh, d dangerous maneuvers, and you see how desperate this person uh, has been, uh, and they continue to drive real quickly on side streets now in Compton, Christine. And I know we are still in Compton. So, Dennis, we talked about uh, this driver staying in a familiar area, perhaps, Ooh. yet no signs that this driver's looking to bail out, to pull over, not to yet. stop at a neighborhood. No, not yet. You wonder how much longer, though, Dennis, this, this car is going to be able to go. We've already seen damage on, it looks like, the left side of the vehicle. We know that two hubcaps at least have flown off. Uh, and and you, you, as you mentioned, with no offense to our friends at Hyundai, uh, you know, we're not looking at, uh, at a Porsche here. You, you, you right. know, this yeah. car isn't necessarily built for these kinds of maneuvers. No, no, it's not. They give you know, a, 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 a ten-year warranty, you know, they're, they're, but not for they, this. They are economical. They're powerful. Yes. They they get the job done clearly. But yeah. you know the constant hammering of the gas pedal, the constant hard on the brakes. You know, at night sometimes we've seen them where actually the the brakes will start glowing because of the heat and the, the constant abuse. And with this that car, you know, in this case, we're actually hoping and rooting for that car to fail. You know, you want right. to see something. You want to see that that it would start over. Here. Heating, or uh, or you want to see him like hit hit a curb and get another get a flat tire or something break that will bring this to an end safely. You don't want to see this thing crash clearly. And, and you know we always talk about how much gas they have. We we covered many of them where they just kind of run out of gas. But we are on Artesia. I, my my monitor is a little. I'm on my iPad, so it's digitized. But I can see that we're on Artesia. That vehicle going 70, almost 80 miles an hour on surface streets out there. Today. Today. And these folks, like you said earlier on, I heard somebody say they just want to get home. They're just driving. You're just going to pick up your kids or, or, or whatever the reason is. You know, you are not expecting somebody to come whizzing by or cutting you off or running a red light at 80 miles an hour. And, you know, that that is the only reason when... I see the law enforcement, the black and white, the cruisers behind these vehicles. You know, yeah, it might be, you know, I'm doing the air quotes, agitating that driver, but it's also warning the public. At least people on the road have got that heads up that, hey, something might be going on. I need to put my head on a swivel. I can hear these sirens. Where are they coming from? And that, that is the big positive. But right now you see this person clearly with nobody behind them, no law enforcement that we're seeing behind that vehicle. I wish, I, wish John would get a little bit of a wider shot there. But it doesn't seem that there is oh, that to be anybody down there. So this person is driving this recklessly, knowing that basically there is nobody pursuing them, as in on the ground behind them. The driving hasn't gotten any better. And this is this is what I always say. I am glad I'm not making those decisions. I could I couldn't I couldn't sleep with myself at night making a decision saying oh pull off or stay on and then have an outcome that's horrific. Right now, getting back on the freeway, that's a little bit of a relief. At least these 
these drivers are all going the same direction. There aren't going to be any intersections. And hopefully, it, you know, and driving on the, on, in the emergency lanes and doing these things, you know, hopefully he's going to pick up a nail or he's going to pick up a screw or something is going to damage one of those tires. This thing is going to slowly come to an end. But you can sl clearly see damage on that car. This driver is desperate to get away, not slowing down, it, it, and, almost, and, and continually getting these super close calls. And every time, you know, it, it's luck. It's just luck. You it can really say is. that that driver's skilled. I, I'm not buying it. It I, is luck. Every time he's still, not getting into an accident, it is just luck. And eventually, we don't want to see that luck run out. I agree. I mean, every time there's a near miss, uh, you're thinking, thank God that driver is going to get home safely tonight. Uh, the vehicle here again, back on the freeway after dropping down into the North Long Beach area, back on the freeway here. Um, I, I agree with you. You know, you wish that the driver would hit a nail or something and get a flat tire. That would something would bring this to an end because he's not really going in an area that is familiar enough that law enforcement can put a spike strip necessarily because it's hard to predict where that driver is going to go. Well, I would venture to say this heard person, thousands and, of times, where, you know, and, and, and you and I both, and, and probably all, all of us, all four of us, have been in these situations where we talk to public about these things, and, you know, it's like somebody's always asking me something, but it's like, well, why don't they just put the spike strip out? You know, it's not that easy. It's not every vehicle has a spike strip. And then also, you, like you said, Christine, you got to get ahead of it. How are you going to get ahead of that car? with those spike strips and be able to toss it out safely. That's the other side of it, too. Yeah. You, you know, we've, we've seen it in the past. We've talked about it getting off on another off-ramp here, but still in, or well, now we're in North Long Beach, so still very close to the, the Compton area, and clearly it's got to be some place that this person knows. But back to the spike strips, it's, you know, they've got to do it safely. You don't want any other vehicles getting involved in this, and we know that it isn't going to be okay, a blowout. Okay, here we go. Here we hey, go. This is something going different. Into now a... he's get, now he's, this is the first time I've seen him go through a, through a, uh, uh, a shopping center or anything other than a roadway, which makes me think that maybe we've seen this in the past where they just stop and they run into a into a store. But in this case, it looks like he's just he's just cutting through there. But uh, again, those spike strips aren't going to blow a, blow a tire. But they still, you just don't want to have those issues. You don't want to put the officers at risk, and you don't want to put the, the 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 public at risk. So that's one of the reasons why they can't just throw out that spike strip in front of them. But again, we're back on these surface streets. These speeds are continuing. At least they're staying slower as it would be. And it looks like maybe he's just trying to make his way back onto the 91. Boy, he really likes that 91 freeway down there in North Long Beach in, in the Compton area. All right, so if you're just joining us, the time is now 5.30. Welcome to the Fox 11 News at 5.30. I'm Alex Michelson with Christine Devine. Also with us uh, is Stu Mundell and a former LAPD officer and former L.A. City Council member, Dennis Zine. We are watching a pursuit uh, in the North Long Beach area. We'll see if we may have lost this vehicle again uh, under the uh, yeah. pass there. Um, this is somebody who was originally uh, wanted in Lakewood for robbery of a sunglass hut. Um, and uh, maybe we've, we've lost this person. Uh, the biggest challenge right now. Okay, so somebody's walking. We don't know if those yeah, are those John, people. Yeah, John's in the helicopter today, and I see him zooming in, but there's people running around down there. And again, my monitor digitized, but you can clearly see that there's somebody down there. It looks like they're trying to get somebody, you know, get somebody's attention, or maybe they saw what's happening. But, you know, is, is this one of those rope dopes where he pulled up or maybe he got a hold of somebody and they were waiting underneath that overpass we've seen that in the past too yeah. you know again now would be the time for those cruisers to just magically appear and, and and to make their way over there or at least to that intersection at least stop that person of interest right there or that other person of interest and see maybe is the car parked underneath the overpass but right now i i just i don't have access to uh, to the scanner so i can't even really hear yeah. what the conversation is with law enforcement but clearly the camera person today in skyfox really keeping an eye on that one uh, male that just basically walked out from on, uh, that underpass. So there you go. You okay, got to see some and cruisers that are moving shot. away. So hopefully the sheriff's helicopters up there, and hopefully there there is communication between the ground unit. And again, this person walking away definitely suspicious. Is it the suspect? Your guess is really as good as mine. Yeah, well, and Dennis, that's part of the challenge. We were talking about this a little earlier, that uh, because of the policies that we as a society have adopted to allow our overpasses to essentially become home to a homeless encampments uh, that are not really well patrolled, um, 
we there are a lot of people that live under there and there's a lot of places you could hide under there and there's a lot of people that could pop out uh, and yeah. and it's hard to figure out what's going on it's not like it's just a clean area where somebody would would stand out uh, that's correct well what we find is individuals walking away the ground unit should be close by they are they're there they just pulled up Dennis okay, there we, there yep. we go there we go okay because they pulled back just because of the excessive speed and the hazard they don't want an innocent person to get involved injured a car collision but this individual is now somewhere in that vicinity uh, maybe in that house uh, there were two people and hopefully they'll get to one of them uh, and find the other one but now they're going to converge on that residence and find out uh, if that's the individual. They'll be able to connect this fingerprints of the individual, fingerprints in the car, et cetera, if this, in fact, the individual who is driving that car. They'll be able to connect them together. I don't know if anyone has a photo of the individual at the time or if the air unit got, was able to get that, but there's ways to link this person to that car, and they will utilize that to make sure it's the right Dennis, person they've taken into custody. Let's pay a picture here for our viewers. It looks like you have officers there with their guns drawn pointing in a certain direction. Perhaps they have insight on the ground to tell if the person they're looking for is in those bushes there behind that uh, shed or whatever that is there. Um, but obviously now our concern is for officer safety or safety of the residents, people who live in that home there. There's been no sign of anybody home or perhaps they're indoors. Uh, but right now, a concern as we watch this is officer safety and what can they see or not see if somebody's in those bushes? Mm. Well, that's cr that's true, and they have to be very cautious. You have to, the individual yeah. does have a weapon, because start shooting at the officers yeah. and deputies, so they have to be extremely cautious approach. And hopefully, the air unit, with the devices the air unit has, they'll be able to determine if there's someone in those bushes. They have a device that they can sense uh, heat, so yeah. there's an opportunity for them to determine if there's in fact someone in that area. So we're getting. But, you know, you're talking about great exposure to the violence. The officers, they have no protection. Hopefully, they have the ballistic test, and that's it. And they're out there, the two of them. Uh, yeah. This person has a weapon. Those officers are, uh, you well, know, they're, well, they're prone to get. Well, we've seen, Dennis, in the past, sometimes officers will wait out people. Okay, there here you go, they suspect. come. Suspect. Coming are out, they, hands coming up. up. Yep, yeah. suspect. Or that person of interest, at least we should say, yeah. has their hands up. I mean, why that person would walk and go behind a shed is, is kind of bizarre right. behavior. Um, looks like they might still have a phone to their. And, ear and, or, or, and there also but, was a but, woman too that we saw. Whoa! Okay. Well, they're certainly helping, interested. Helping that, uh, certainly that suspect inter down there. You know, if, if this is a suspect, hopefully, uh, you know, those. If you haven't said it already, you know, those sunglasses. His future is not that bright. He's not going to be needing those shades. But you know, those deputies when they get there, I heard Dennis, and Dennis knows this probably way better than any of us as being, you know quarterback uh, uh, armchair quarterbacks but the, you know where's your partner where's your backup and then make right, the approach right. and then I can you know I, and you've been in these so many times I could hear that conversation between the sheriff's helicopter whichever one that is up there and then uh, any of the news media there's going to be this crosstalk going back and forth where did you see him last what do you got where's he at you know do you have eyes on him and it clearly somebody did and uh, and now this suspect definitely going into custody those deputies on the ground you know, and, and Dennis said it, you know, they are getting out of that vehicle, walking into danger. You don't know what this guy's got. You know, you don't know what that situation is. And they are walking into that danger and taking that suspect into custody. And I it would venture to say that that car is probably still underneath that overpass. Well, let us hope Very that correct. is indeed uh, the suspect, the person who was driving that car, who led uh, police on that very dangerous pursuit on surface streets and freeways. And that also is the one responsible for that sunglass hut robbery. And this comes to an end. And there was also a woman, though, that was walking with that suspect. And I wonder yes. what yes. her deal is, if they've located her, what her connection. It certainly seemed like the two of them they, knew yeah, each other. They were other. connecting somehow. We also don't, because we never got a good look, and there were really tinted windows on that vehicle, which may have been a Nissan, may have been a Hyundai. I think it was probably a Nissan. Um, well, that, they're going to check. The officers are going to, deputies are going to check with the store to find out description of the suspect. So they will be able to put it together that way. And if the store has a camera, a video camera, they'll be able to link it that way with uh, the individual they have in custody. So they'll be able to lock this case up, and hopefully uh, justice yeah. will prevail in the court system. Because at least from the chopper, we couldn't get a sense of whether there was uh, more than one person in that car, mm -hmm. which is most right. likely now under that, that uh, overpass. Uh, well... I guess this is uh, the end of this one. Let us just be thankful nobody got hurt. Mm. No innocent vehicle or person or driver 
was in a crash with this suspect. Okay, there's the other person right there. That's the suspect right there. Okay, that Got looks like see. our initial suspect. Well, they'll take the other person into custody to sort out what the situation is, but uh, fortunately they have enough deputies down there now to sort this out. I don't see any higher patrol officers, but I do see a lot of sheriff's deputies. All right. So, so there'll be a lot of paperwork to follow this, but yeah. uh, <laughs> a good job and uh, no innocent people are injured. And thanks for Stu for his bird's eye view from the ground for once, because he's always up in the child of <laughs> broadcasting. Uh, right. And, and, and uh, you said a lot of paperwork. That, that's why I'm sure, you know, you, we all know enough law enforcement friends that uh, you always hear that, you know, you just don't want to have to do the paper on it. You know, that's it. That's right. Let somebody else put the cuffs on them. Right. There you have <laughs> there a, a woman right. being taken into custody. We believe now it appears to be two people were in that car yeah. leading uh, police on that pursuit. Uh, Dennis Zine, we say thank you for your perspective at the start of the pursuit. Stu Mundell, we thank you for jumping in here with our coverage. Uh, again, glad to say nobody hurt after a very lengthy pursuit, more than a half hour, very, very dangerous pursuit. Looks like all ends well with suspects in custody. The, the Stu knows those famous words, code for suspect in custody. All right. Famous words. Thank, thank you, you both, thank you. gentlemen. <laughs> Until the next time we do this, from now, though, we move on to other breaking news. Breaking news out of Sacramento. Governor Gavin Newsom has rejected a proposal to create legal drug injection sites in three of California's biggest cities. That plan would have allowed opioid users in Los Angeles, Oakland, and San Francisco to legally inject drugs under supervision. Proponents say it would be safer for users in case of overdose because there would be trained staff on hand. Opponents say it would have condoned the use of dangerous drugs. Governor Newsom releasing a statement saying, I've long supported the cutting edge of harm reduction strategies. However, I'm acutely concerned about the operations of safe injection sites without strong, engaged local leadership and well-documented, vetted, and thoughtful operational and sustainability plans. Interesting he's getting praise from Republicans for this move, and some of the most progressive Democrats are uh, giving him a hard time about that move. All right, uh, well, we're about 40 minutes into our show. How about we take a commercial break? Somebody's got to pay Stu salary. I think we're doing. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> Real-time closed captioning for 800,000 deaf and hard-of-hearing Southern Californians made possible.